what is my unique selling point, right? What are these like unique value propositions and like why should customers want to support me? Really all I care about is will it work? Mm -hmm. Will it help me? Without a doubt, building your email list and like really having an engaged audience that wants to hear your message um, is, is clutch. Hey guys, this is a quick message from our sponsor, Wix e-commerce. The professional platform that enables entrepreneurs all over the world to create and run their online stores and grow their e-commerce businesses. One of those entrepreneurs is Angel Gregorio, who runs TheSpiceSuite.com, a $2 million multi-channel business on Wix. When the pandemic forced so many brick-and-mortar businesses to close their doors, Angel knew she had to pivot to online to keep selling her spices and keep up with the demand of her loyal customers. In fact, in just a few months, she sold over $900,000 worth of spices through her online store, and her last batch sold out in two and a half minutes. Angel uses social channels and to drive special sales and email marketing to update her customers about new inventory and upcoming events. She also uses in-depth analytics to gain business insights and monitor everything in her sales funnel. Store management, marketing automations, and detailed payment reports all from one dashboard. So if you want to succeed in 2021 and grow your online business like Angel did, head over to wix.com slash e-commerce today. You're listening to E-Commerce Uncensored with Kevin Manel and Jason Caruso. Hey everyone, and thank you for joining us on another episode of E-Commerce Uncensored. My name is Kevin Manel, and I'm here with Jason Caruso. Today we're joined with Brittany Carbone of Tonic CBD. Um, I don't know what you uh, like ingestibles, some um, rub on oh, topicals. Yeah. She's got dog treats. She's got. You can even you can even buy a joint. A CBD we, just, joint, we just spent three hundred dollars on her website, right, Kev? <laughs> yeah. I'm not done shopping yet. I'm still. Oh, we're not done yet. Okay. But she was really great. I mean, a lot of information, a lot of interesting information on CBD, really, which I thought was really cool. Um, but also a lot of information on like, um, really kind of complex marketing strategies because of the difficulties, you know, getting things like this past. Facebook and all those kinds of things that you got to deal with when you're talking about supplements and ingestible type things, especially CBD, especially CBD. Absolutely. So enjoy this interview with Brittany Carbone. Hey, Brittany, thank you so much for joining us today. How you doing? Doing well. Thank you so much for having me. So I'm really looking, I'm looking forward to hearing about your marketing strategies, but I'm, I'm also very uh, excited to hear about this product because I, I have used CBD in the past. I, I have done quite a bit of research actually years and years ago, my mom had the, the C word. I know you're, that's a very, a no, no in your industry, I'm sure, but that's when I learned a lot about it and all the benefits that it has. So why don't you first tell us about your product, how you got started and we'll, we'll go from there. Yeah, for sure. So, uh, it's definitely important to understand that not all CBD is created equal. Um, you know, really, it really matters how you source it, how it's made, um, the type of product, what other ingredients it's combined with, all of these things are really super important to consider as a CBD consumer. And um, that's kind of really where, where Tonic started, right? It was how do, how do we really take something that's already so great, CBD, and make it even better? Um, and that really started with my own needs. So I was working as a personal trainer and health coach at the time. This was back in early 2017 when CBD <clears throat> was not really on the radar in, you know, anywhere near um, the scale that it is today, right? Where nowadays CBD is in everything that you see, it's everywhere you turn. Um, back in that, in that time, it was really just starting to kind of pop up on people's radars, but you really had to be looking for it, you know? And I, I, start, I learned about CBD and I was already a, a very avid cannabis user. Cannabis was something that, you know, always helped me with my anxiety and my depression, but the problem was that it wasn't really workday friendly. So I would find myself, you know, really looking for something that, you know, could help me the way that cannabis could, but, you know, wouldn't impair me from being able to do my job effectively and having the energy that I needed to have and have, and, you know, just having the wherewithal, you know, to be able to train people and guide them through intense workouts and things like that uh, and not put them in danger by being, you know, in outer space somewhere. So, uh, <laughs> you know, that was really like the, what uh, motivated me to try CBD in the first place. And it was really uh, surprised me how well that it worked. I was kind of skeptical towards it. I was like, you know, as somebody who was more so of a, of a cannabis user, I was like, 
this is like fake weed. I don't really get it, you know, but after actually trying it, I was like, wow, this is actually doing something. Like I do actually feel a difference in like my anxiety, like my social anxiety, general mood. Um, and as I started to pay more attention, I was like, okay, I'm actually getting better sleep. I'm um, recovering from my workouts better. Uh, but you know, it was really kind of that, um, what inspired me to really learn more about how is CBD doing what it's doing, right? Like how does cannabis in general do what it does? Um, I always just kind of took it for granted that it worked for me. I didn't really like uh, ever bother to kind of pop the hood and see what was going on with, with cannabis and our systems. And that's really um, how I learned a lot about the endocannabinoid system, about how CBD does what it does. And I started to uh, connect the dots between CBD and more traditional adaptogens like ashwagandha. Ashwagandha being something that was already in my routine, something that like, you know, with all the natural remedies that I was trying to replace cannabis, ashwagandha was one like that actually stuck, uh, became like a staple in my, you know, pre-workout routine, my morning routine, I would um, recommend it to clients and really the benefit of it being that it's um, super adaptive and helps you helps uh, bring you back to your ideal state of balance, right? It helps to uh, make you more resilient towards stress, whether that's, you know, physical, mental, or emotional stress. So as I'm doing all this research about CBD, um, like I said, connecting these dots and uh, I kind of just figured, uh, you know, it's a per usually a personality flaw, but usually at this time it actually worked to my advantage that, you know, my my uh, mindset is usually, you know, if some is good, more is better. So, uh, you know, I was really like, okay, if I combine these two things, combine CBD and ashwagandha, you know, they work towards a similar goal, right? They're both um, designed to help our bodies um, return and maintain, return to and maintain that ideal state of balance called homeostasis, um, help our bodies, um, you know, defend against the effects of stress, all these things, but it takes different pathways to get there, right? Ashwagandha does it in one way, CBD does it in another. So the theory was, if I combine these two things, they can essentially cover more ground in their path to balance healing and, you know, less stress, less anxiety, and overall, you know, feeling better. And that's exactly what happened. The, um, the results for myself were, you know, personally life-changing. This is you know, exactly what I was looking for to help not only with my anxiety, but, you know, my depression, my mood, my energy levels, and the real kind of like, you know, moment where I was like, okay, this can actually be something is when I started to uh, share it with my clients as well. And the results were replicated with my clients. They were, they were feeling the same benefits that I was. And, uh, you know, from there, it really became my mission to um, develop, you know, these, these formulas, uh, you know, kind of really refine them and develop um, kind of more formulas that use the same type of logic, the same kind of approach of like, how do we enhance these already amazing inherent benefits of CBD and make a more um, targeted and integrative solution? Because I think that that, if anything, could be the downside of CBD is that, you know, it has all of these amazing benefits, but it can be so varied from person to person, right? It's such an individualized um, experience, um, you know, to this day, even though the research around CBD has gotten so much better, it's still really hard to nail down a recommended dosage for everybody because of the fact that everybody is so different. Um, everybody's endocannabinoid systems are different. So what our formulas do is kind of kind of work to take that guesswork out of it by you know pushing CBD in a certain direction by providing a lot of support with these other ingredients that can you know really target the effects that you're looking for. Okay, I have a question for you. Do what? you sell anything strong enough for, to deal with the anxiety of working with Kevin every day? <laughs> I, I mean, it's that just that, that's uh, a tall order, but I would have to say, I, I still I, let me tell you something. You have no idea. <laughs> oh, give me a break. Yeah. You love I me. need something really <laughs> strong. It's funny that you say that because I, I've always like, I, well, not always, but I used to smoke weed, you know, back in college and all those days. And like, it did help, but like, I was always in the same state you are, but like, I always was envious of the, those, the, <laughs> those pothead guys who could just smoke all day long and just be chill and just yeah, like, like Snoop Dogg. The dude yeah. smokes and then runs like a marathon. Exactly. Yeah. Like yeah. nothing's wrong. If I, I can't be seen. When Me I neither. <laughs> if I smoke weed, the next place I'm going to be is in my bed, period. Yeah. And I don't, oh no, actually I take that back. I'm going to be in a pantry eating and then I'm going to bed. So, I mean, and then I take, I even have my, my gummies over here. Am I allowed to say that? Kev? I have my, my gummies over here. Because you know what, Brittany, I have a question for you. And this is like, uh, you know, so I don't know if this is related, but I don't generally have problems sleeping. I felt like while I was taking my CBD, it was actually keeping me up at night. Like, I don't know if it was because I was thinking a lot more about just like work and what's, I, I don't know what it was, but I feel like I was having trouble sleeping on 
the CBD that I was using. Is there that for some people? Is that possible? Yeah. And I think that that kind of speaks um, very well to the point that I was uh, making before that CBD can be such a varied experience um, because of the fact that it is so like adaptive to basically whatever your body needs. So like, like you said, you don't usually have trouble sleeping, right? Like it's not usually something that you have an issue with. So what CBD could be doing is kind of working in the opposite direction of like, oh, like, you know, kind of just not necessarily acting as like a stimulant, but, you know, um, just kind of working to up your energy levels a little bit more or, you know, kind of up that uh, mental clarity and, you know, that, that type of benefit, um, because, and, you know, that's something like in smaller doses, CBD can be more of a, you know, stimulant, if you will, you know what I mean? In the sense that it helps, you know, focus, it helps you kind of just get your work done and, and be more in that kind of state. Whereas uh, larger doses, higher doses can be more of that, you know, um, sedative kind of effect. Um, so the dosing matters and also your individual receptivity matters. All these different things play such a big role and it can be so hard with CBD alone um, to really be able to nail down those exact effects. Um, and it could also even be like something as simple as like, you know, certain gummies have a higher sugar content, right? And like that sugar can keep you up and things like that. So that's what we really try to keep our formulations as natural um, as possible, making sure that nothing is in the, in the formulations that are going to kind of counteract the benefits that we want to get out of the CBD, right? Like, so sugar is really inflammatory. So if you're kind of having a, a CBD product that is loaded up with sugar, you're kind of canceling out any of these benefits that you're going to be getting from the CBD, right? Uh, my favorite of all time, uh, crazy CBD products. Like when you talk, think about like just seeing CBD in the most ridiculous places nowadays was uh, at, in this restaurant in Brooklyn, they were serving uh, CBD cheese boats. So it's basically this, just like bread and cheese, like the giant, I can't even explain it, but like, why would you put CBD in that? It was like the most inflammatory dish that anybody could ever and it's serve. It's supposed to be fighting put, an inflammation. Right? Exactly. So like, you're going to put 10 milligrams of CBD in it, charge people an extra, you know, ten dollars for this thing and they're going to see absolutely no benefit and that i think as you know you're thinking about cbd marketing that becomes one of like the biggest hurdles that you have to overcome is like all the bs that's rampant through the market right it's like there's a lot of crazy promises there's a lot of gimmicky products there's a lot of uh you know a lot a lot of things that are inherent in any kind of you know up and coming industry that's you know, red hot the way that cbd has been the past couple of years you get a lot of people who are looking to bank off the novelty of it and really kind of just cash in on that rush rather than who are like you know people um who are really invested in the long-term growth and uh integrity and you know really um promise and potential of this industry so I have a question for you because I've been take I've been using this um, CBD cream, okay. Mm -hmm. And I'm I've read I've read and my business partner, who our other business partner, who is like a biologist, said the cream, the CBD cream, is kind of like a gimmicky thing because the molecules are too big and it really can't like absorb into your skin like it needs to to help you. He's like, what's actually working is arnica. Now, are you familiar with arnica? Yes. Okay. So I bought Arnica cream mm -hmm. and I swear it's not working as well as a CBD cream. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't, I'm like confused now because this thing was $13 for four ounces. <laughs> CBD is $60 for one ounce. Yeah. And I'm not understanding like, like, is it, can it, can the cream work even though this, I mean, I don't, I don't know what's going on. Yeah, I mean, me? <laughs> uh, I, I feel I feel a little bit funny questioning a, a biologist, but um, CBD topicals have been, you know, clinically uh, proven to be effective, uh, at least, you know, in certain certain um, aspects, right? So it's not going to be effective in the way that an ingestible product will. So applying CBD cream is not going to take away your anxiety, for example, right? But it will um, have an effect on that localized area to which you apply it. Um, it will interact with the endocannabinoid receptors that are present in that area of your skin. So you're, you have endocannabinoid receptors in pretty much every system throughout your body, including your skin. So um, CBD is actually able to interact with those receptors effectively. Um, CBD in particular, it's very uh, interesting the way that it works. It doesn't necessarily interact directly with the um, receptors of the endocannabinoid system, but rather allows more of your, you know, the uh, endocannabinoids that your body naturally produces to be active in your system 
those molecules interact with the endocannabinoid receptors. It's a whole thing, right? But basically- so All you had to say was, yes, it works. This is way over your head, so, uh, Jason. I'm sorry. So there's, um, so there's this lab, Gene Markers Lab, you know, that we're, um, we plan to work with a little bit more in the future, but they do some um, really great work on, you know, with uh, lab tissue cultures and CBD efficacy testing. And they've been able to um, prove that like, like it does actually um, have an effect on the inflammatory markers in the skin um, and everything like that. So it does- have a um, a noted effect on the inflammatory response and pain perception. All right. So, which one of your products am I buying for my <laughs> hip pain? Chronic, chronic tonic, all the way. So, chronic. I, I chronic always tonic. have it. Always have it by my side. It's, it's small but mighty, and I swear, like to this day, one of my favorite things is just watching people use chronic for the first time because it's always like holy crap, like, is it really working? Is this in my head? Uh, because uh, it's like that quick. And it still even surprises me. But um, when I was, you know, first developing these products, you know, still working as a trainer, uh, I would kind of, especially my older clientele who I knew wouldn't be as, you know, hip to uh, trying some cannabis products and things like that. I would actually kind of uh, trick them when I first made this product. And I was like, you know, I have this, uh, you know, pain relieving oil, it's all natural plant-based ingredients. Like, do you mind if I apply it to that shoulder that you've been having an issue with, right. That we haven't been able to get mobilized effectively. They're like, yeah, no problem. Put it on their shoulder and just watch their reaction as all of a sudden they get a better range of motion that they've, than they've been able to get, you know, in months and years. Uh, and you know, actually like, Oh, wow. Like I can move my shoulder without cringing or like without, you know, wincing in pain. And uh, you know, then that's when I would drop the bomb, like, haha, that's cannabis. And then <laughs> it's like, Oh my gosh. And like, that's, I think like speaks really um, to what CBD can do for the cannabis industry in general. It's such a good, uh, it's like a positive gateway drug, right? Like it's like to, for people whose minds are kind of closed to like cannabis gets you high it makes you like a stoner, just, you know, lifeless on the couch. And that's that, um, which is a lot of people's perceptions, especially older generations who grew up, you know, on Nancy Reagan's messaging and everything like that. It's definitely something that they're, very much, you know, embedded in their minds. So um, topical CBD products, I think have, you know, really led the charge and like opening people's minds to the medicinal benefits of cannabis that it can actually provide um, real relief without necessarily having that, um, that kind of, you know, uh, tag along um, effect of, you know, that the high that comes with THC. Okay. I have two, two more quick questions. And then I think I want to start asking you about your marketing. Um, okay. Number one, why do you, all you people have such little containers of these things? Like I need to use this thing every day. <laughs> Is it going to cost me a thousand dollars a day to like make my hip feel better? It might. I mean, until, until it gets easier for, uh, for CBD companies to, to market and also, uh, you know, even sell the products. That's another big thing e-commerce wise um, that CBD companies are up against is uh, credit card processing rates. So when right. you think about like just, you know, all these kind of additional costs that are added because of the red tape that um, we face as CBD companies, it definitely keeps the cost high, but um, it's definitely, you know, very interesting to kind of see how the pricing dynamics are changing as the supply chain changes, because uh, previously there was like a very, it was very difficult to, you know, source the products. There wasn't that many producers. Uh, now there's a, an over, overproduction of hemp is a, a huge issue. Um, but there's still kind of a limited amount of processors that are making the product. So that's really kind of where um, everything kind of gets stuck or like, you know, where the pricing dynamics are really set. And, uh, you know, it's, you're seeing some, some products that are, you know, much, much cheaper and they usually kind of get more so, uh, you know, kind of pushed into the market, like of like vape shops, convenience stores and things like that. But the higher end, um, I do think that that's something that the CBD industry and the cannabis industry in general needs to kind of reconcile is like, how do we make this accessible for people who are, you know, using it as medicine and need like a, a big amount per day. And that's, you know, definitely, I will um, concede to that that's a, a, an issue that we still have to solve for sure. Yeah. I mean, because for me, I'm like, like how many times do I have to apply this thing? How long does it last? And then like, how many friggin' bottles of this thing do I need? I mean, my, <laughs> my hip needs to be replaced. I mean, I'm, I mean, I'm going to go get like a, like a, a shot on Thursday, but like, you know, I, I, I do like to have multiple things. Like I like to, you know, I'll, I'll 
I'll do the, the CBD oil and then I like to do the cream. And then like when yeah. I play golf, I'll do like, I'll take Advil alongside all three of those things. So right. like, <laughs> I need it like every day at this point. Um, like You'd be I want to buy it for our steady supply membership. Hmm. 20%, 20% off monthly deliveries, free shipping. But will that last me a month? This actually, yes. I mean, if it's just around the hip, it should last you a month, even though it's a, a small uh, little bottle, it's very concentrated. And it's just like, since with the roll-on application, um, it's like a very limited amount. Like, you know, it, oh, okay, uh, cool. yeah, I'm going to buy it and try it. If I see that it works, I will do that subscription thing. Cause trust me, I'm looking for yeah. anything. <laughs> I'm going to buy the I'm going to buy the sampler pack I like that. <laughs> anyway. So let me, uh, let me ask you this. Cause you obviously noticed a, a, a whole, like whole number or a need an mm -hmm. industry that has a need, but like we talk about a lot of people who do that. They find a problem and they solve it. They invent a product, but you're talking about like grown weed, right? Like how, how is that product? How do you just like, okay, I have this idea. Cause a lot of get, a lot of people get stuck there. Like mm -hmm. I get stuck there. I have an idea and then I'm like, okay, I'm not gonna be able to make that. Right. A lot of people have that as well. So how did you this like get to the point where like, I'm just going to grow it and I'm going to start making it. <laughs> yeah. Well, so the, the making it part came first. So it was really like, you know, um, a lot of research about, six, seven months of just R&D in my parents' kitchen, just really like doing as much research as I possibly could because there really wasn't a lot of information out there to go off of. And the other issue with, you know, lack of information, also a lack of supply, um, a lack of consistency in the quality and, um, you know, just general source of the products that I was getting. So uh, my family actually has had um, property in upstate New York since uh, 2004. Um, and yeah, my parents actually were spending some more time up there while my husband and I were still down on Long Island with our full-time jobs. And, you know, they were, uh, you know, kind of getting ready to retire up there a little bit. And, um, you know, That's what I, I had do. this wild idea of, you know, Hey, we should grow hemp there because, you know, this is a real up and coming industry. We won't have to worry about these supply problems we've been having. And like I said before, not all CBD is created equal and being in the industry that I was in being, you know, kind of. Uh, in that mindset of, you know, higher end wellness products, um, you know, from I was working at you know, Equinox gym at the time, you know, so definitely entrenched within that, you know, luxury wellness scene and everything. So um, that was really how I how I saw these products coming out, because at the time, CBD was either very head shoppy or very clinical, right? There wasn't really this like Lux wellness space that is like pretty dominant in the CBD space now. So that was really kind of what I had in mind for the product. So I knew that the quality of the ingredients had to be at the forefront. Uh, it had to be top priority that I had to be able to kind of uh, walk the walk, so to speak, as far as, you know, really delivering um, a higher end product that's, that's better able to deliver on these value propositions. So um, that was, that was kind of the, uh, what spurred it. Um, we had the land, like I said, if we didn't have the land already, it would have been a non-starter. We didn't have the kind of capital to like go and, and get land or anything like that. So um, it just was very, very good timing um, as we started to um, look into partnering with either Binghamton University or Cornell University, which our farm kind of sits right between the two. And both of them were already building out their hemp research programs. And at the time you had to be licensed under a research institution in order to grow hemp. So as we were exploring the partnership opportunities with them, uh, Governor Cuomo actually announced that he was opening up uh, licensing for private farmers to be able to grow their own hemp, have their own licenses, uh, you know, while we were already in this process. So we went for it, got our own license. We were among the um, first uh, privately licensed farms to grow hemp in New York State in uh, 2017. Started uh, our first grow in the summer of 2018. Uh, you know, at that time, Eric, my husband and I, we left our jobs uh, on Long Island. We moved upstate to the farm full time and you know, that was really like, I ran, ran the company, ran Tonic pretty much by myself for all of 2018, basically our first kind of real operational year, um, had a, just a, a small little space. I was manufacturing all of the products in, distributing it, you know, uh, one woman show, so to speak. And uh, by the end of 2018, we hired our first um, couple of employees to help out with production, help out with some sales, and just really um, had been able to, because of the timing that we started we were really able to kind of ride the wave organically and like, you know, grow with the industry, which was really, which was really huge because I will be the first to admit right now that, you know, for us to launch the way that we did and, you know, to grow the way that we did, we would have been dead in the water if we did that in early 2019, rather than 
starting that process early 2017, just the way that the industry changed, the way that the, the market dynamics had shift, has shifted over the past few years, um, we wouldn't have been able to bootstrap the way we were and get the traction that we did if we had started this process at any other time. So you and I have something in common. You used to work at a gym and I walked past one once. So that's, you know. I'm, wonder, I'm wondering what the conversation would be like. I mean, my, my parents- I had a, a question, a, by my, the way, Kevin, before you just cut me off, but go ahead. I thought, I, I thought, I thought you were done. I'm sorry, no, Jason. No, I thought no. you were just making a joke. I wasn't done with the joke. And you just cut me off. Okay. You, you walked past a gym. Heard the yeah, joke before. But, so. Yes, but I have a, I had go a ahead, question Jason, for you. No, you go, go ahead, go ahead, go. No, I was just going to make a comment because I was just thinking about it as you were speaking, how you have the, my parents have a farm and I just wonder what that conversation would be like. You know, you guys aren't around that <laughs> much. You weed. guys aren't working. I'm thinking about, <laughs> just, just, I'm still thinking about growing and selling some growing weed. weed. Yeah. Not, not <laughs> like that, obviously. But. Um, go ahead, Jason. So Kevin well, and I used to be uh, partners in a CBD company. Uh, they had like topical stuff and, and, you know, stuff for your lips and stuff. And you know, you talk about like the industry changing. It's kind of weird because when we did this with this guy who used to be a listener of our podcast, what was that, Kev? Like two years ago? Yeah, 2019. 2019. Like it was like it, in his head or in his mind, it was like CBD is going to blow up where we're not even going to have to market it. And all we're going to have to do is just put it in front of people and then everybody's going to buy it. And it was funny because it was like the complete opposite. Like we put it in front of people and nobody bought it. And it was like, I, I feel like the CBD industry has had has like some weird curves, like, right? Like it's Absolutely. like, it was like the big thing, but like nobody really bought it. And then like it got a little bit big and it really didn't do the things that I don't mean the CBD itself, but the industry, it didn't sell the way people anticipated it to sell. And I, I don't know why, but it was like a weird thing because we really thought this thing was going to take off and it really did. Yeah. And that's like puts you in the, a very similar position as most people who are entering the industry, especially around that time. Um, and in all sectors, whether it is retail brands, uh, processing and manufacturing or cultivation, um, CBD is definitely a, a bubble. I don't know if the bubble burst, but it just never really grew to the, the size that it anticipated. And there's a lot of different factors that contribute to that. Um, a lot of it in the beginning consumer trust and awareness and education, right? People were just confused as to what it was, didn't know if it would get them high. There was regulations were all over the place. Is it legal to buy it in this state? You know, there was a lot of confusion, right? So a lot of it was just like educating at first. Then once people were educated about it, like it started to be everywhere, then like that's, it almost became worse because it's like, well, now everybody and, and their mother is just selling CBD products. And now the consumer trust you know, got even harder to, to really garner. And right? the regulations and then, too. And the regulations um, really stopped it from being like, at this point, you know, we expected CBD to be on the shelves of every CVS of, you know, of Target, of Walmart, right? And like, it's starting in spurts, right? Like CVS and like Walgreens are like accepted a couple of topical brands, but they even like got burnt. It's really the FDA has yet to make us a, a solid stance on CBD. They basically um, have said that CBD topicals are really the only, you know, FDA approved application, um, ingestible CBD. The FDA technically has still not determined whether or not that is a dietary supplement, if it's a drug, if it's a food additive, you know, so it's still in this limbo where uh, mainstream retail does not want to take the risk. Any kind of, you know, larger retail chain that is going, that is kind of, you know, their lawyers have that final say of that, the decisions that they're going to make, they have to answer to a board of, you know, they're not going to take the, um, take the risk legally of putting CBD products on their shelves and, you know, something happening. So, um, but that also means it's the same thing for banking. CBD companies still don't have access to mainstream banking um, options, right? So like, that's from everything from just being able to open a standard bank account to credit card processing for your website to, um, you know, something that's been really hot right now in e-com is, you know, these split payment services, right? Like split up your payments into four, you know, monthly payments or whatever. And after it's been pay. a really, what's that? Afterpay. Yeah. Afterpay, Affirm, Sezzle, all these different things becoming a really hot um, kind of way for e-commerce sites to really, you know, give their um, give their customers more flexibility in their payments, everything like that, those kinds of things. 
are not readily available to CBD companies. And I say readily available because there's like Sezzle, I do believe um, works with some CBD companies, but it's, you know, difficult to get approved, right? It's not like you're, if you were just selling, you know, a product that doesn't have CBD in it, right? The, the um, process is always a little bit more difficult. So with all of these regulatory burdens um, and with all of these kinds of just the uncertainty of the fact that, you know, regulations could change any day and, you know, could really sideline your entire business if you're not careful, um, you know, if you're not prepared to adapt with these changes, it makes it, you know, really difficult to, um, to be successful, to gain traction. And, you know, as you're seeing like more and more smaller brands emerge and more, more people rush into the industry, you're also seeing uh, larger money enter the industry, right? Like that is, uh, has the ability to kind of burn, burn through cash a little bit more, um, take more of the, like these, you know, have a larger marketing spend for digital advertising that's super low converting for CBD because it has to go to a landing page that doesn't say CBD on it before it can take you to the actual page where you can actually buy something. It's this whole process that, you know, it's not a super strong ROI for, you know, smaller brands that, you know, don't, can't afford to, you know, just be um, burning cash like that. So that those larger companies can kind of afford to drown out smaller companies while they're waiting for the market to mature to allow for them to you know, capture more of the market once it gets to that point. So there's a lot of, a lot of crazy things going on and there's a lot, of, a lot of people kind of clamoring for consumer's attention right now in the market. And it's like, how are, you, how are you different than any other brand that is trying to sell me CBD, right? And I think that that's like the main question that CBD brands need to be asking themselves like, what is my unique selling point, right? What are these like unique value propositions? And like, why should customers want to support me rather than, you know, the hundred other CBD brands that are, I'm seeing all over my Instagram feed every day, right? And that's, it's becoming increasing, increasingly difficult for CBD brands to answer because a lot of them are sourcing from the same manufacturers. There's about four or five manufacturers that are sourcing, like, uh, or producing rather about 75% of the brands that you see on the market um, they are all the same, you know, and it's it's getting really difficult to um, to kind of continue to differentiate. And that's something that um, what we offer through our manufacturing facility, Bardo Labs, is, you know, pretty much we offer brands the opportunity to leverage this, the same unique um, selling points that Tonic does uh, and what's been able to get us really far. And that's, you know, our sustainability, our social responsibility and our overall approach to um, to the market, really taking more so of that craft approach um, and you know, highlighting the intentionality around everything that we do. Ever wonder how the e-commerce brands you admire do it? How they just know the right message to send to the right people at the right time? Guess what? It's not experience. They have the right data and the right tools. They have Klaviyo. Klaviyo's data-driven marketing automation platform is sophisticated enough to power those legendary campaigns from the brands you admire. But they made it simple, easy, and fast enough for anyone to use. Klaviyo helps brands easily create personalized, multi-channel marketing campaigns using the most powerful asset, your customer's data. Klaviyo integrates with all leading e-commerce platforms, helping you use your customer data in real time to send more relevant email and SMS automations. Plus, building a marketing campaign is drag and drop easy. You can get started with your first campaign in under an hour and easily build from there with Klaviyo's best performing templates. Klaviyo gives you all the power of an, an enterprise marketing automation platform and none of the complexity so you can compete with the big guys. No wonder more than 65,000 brands can't get enough. To get started with your free trial of Klaviyo, visit klaviyo.com slash uncensored. That's K-L-A-V-I-Y-O dot com slash uncensored. Let's talk about, let's go back a little bit because you had mentioned your marketing and some of the struggles you've had um, getting your product out there because part of the, another part of the problem when we had this partner was not only like people not buying it, it was actually getting it out there. Like we, cause we run Facebook ads in our agency. Mm -hmm. and I, I must've struggled for weeks. Like I would get it going, the ad would go and then it would get shut down. It would yeah. start. And then I'd like change a word. I'd like change. Like I started out with CBD cause I really mm -hmm. wasn't sure. And I thought maybe I could get it past the bots real quick. Right. So then I would change it to hemp and then I would go for a little bit and then it'd be like, no, 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 that's no good. Mm -hmm. But I'm, I'm curious to ha see how, how you are here, how about how you got around that? Because we, I think a lot, not even just CBD products, a lot of like uh, supplements and things like that, that have similar issues to you had. So how did you get around that to actually get the word out of your product? So really keeping it um, organic. And that in the beginning was a lot of um, 
influencer uh, placements, like, but like I'm talking like much smaller influencers, micro influencers and that kind of stuff. And it was really just sending products to them. And like, you know, and again, that's why I was like, at the time that we started, it was like so crucial because now every, if like, you know, any influencer has already posted at least once about one other CBD brand, right? Mm -hmm. But at that time, it was like completely fresh. Like they really had like audiences weren't burnt out on it. And that was really um, a big part of it was just, you know, we had to be confident in the beginning, which, you know, I was, you know, completely stood by the formulations and stood by the products. And I knew that like getting into people's hands, like that's all it would take. And then once they tried it, like they would want to promote it, they would want to buy it. And that definitely did work. And then what we did from there was really um, a, a bigger push towards um, like experiential marketing and like just being in like pop-ups and different um, getting in front of people and being able to tell our story and to educate around it is it is really difficult to um, navigate online. And basically how you do get around, uh, you know, the Facebook restrictions is, you know, careful wording, like you just said, like the difference between CBD and hemp and all of that, but it's also, um, you know, where are you directing the traffic that's going to click on that ad? And basically what you have to do is create a separate landing page that doesn't say CBD on it anywhere. It only says hemp, um, really only directs you to purchase topical products. And, you know, basically now it's gotten like, uh, the kind of crawl that Facebook does, um, you know, before approving a site or, you know, taking it down or anything like that. Um, it's a pretty, pretty deep crawl that they'll, if you're linked to like your site where you are selling, let's say even like a vape product, that's even like more, more of an extreme risk to Facebook than it, like a tincture ingestible product. Right. So like if you're linking to a website, like your main website that also sells a vape product, they're still going to shut you down. So you really have to build out this kind of standalone website that is completely targeted towards uh, Facebook's, you know, policies and it works around their policies, which can be really expensive. If you're a small, small business, you know, you just invested a bunch of money into building this dope website that's, you know, you can't wait to drive people to. And then you're like, crap, I actually can't drive any traffic to this <laughs> website. I'm going to have to build a whole new one. You know, so it's really, it's daunting. Um, so really uh, organic traffic, um, meaning like, S, like really investing into SEO, um, investing into content marketing, that has really been like the go-to for CBD marketing. Um, so, you know, trying to rank for these top questions, like, you know, will CBD get me high? How does CBD work? All of these different things that like consumers are asking, you want to rank for that. And it's not easy because those are definitely high volume um, searches and, you know, it can get costly. So making sure that SEO is like a big part of your marketing strategy from the beginning and that you're building, uh, building your site for that, you know, with that in mind, building out your content strategy with that in mind um, can go a really long way in driving awareness without, you know, draining your bank account within, you know, months on Facebook uh, ads that aren't giving you the returns that you want to see. Why aren't you? Cause like, to me, this seems like, you know, like an, like an, like a email play. Like, yeah. why, like instead of like, just ha like having some sort of like PDF that says, you know, like top five natural alter alternatives yeah. to blah, blah, blah. And then in that ebook talk about CBD because Facebook can't stop you from doing that and yeah. then growing your email list that way. And, you know, to me, like that, that would be probably the yeah. way to go. Email, yeah. Email has been one of our highest, you know, revenue like driver, um, for a long time now, for years. Um, and it's, you know, the, without a doubt, building your email list and like really having an engaged audience that wants to hear your message um, is is clutch. And like, like you said, like a landing page like that, that's not going to direct people. You know, again, like it's, you have to be okay with these kind of more so awareness campaigns. And like, you know, if you like you're, and set up any kind of Facebook or anything like, you know, their awareness campaigns, right? Like they're, it's going to be really hard to drive lower funnel action, um, you know, through these campaigns because of those restrictions, but top of the funnel awareness can definitely, you can work around that. Um, perfect, like you said, um, kind of mentioned the perfect way to do that with an ebook or something like that. And that once you have those emails, that's huge. Is Like I said, that's when we like really just need like, okay, we need to drive some revenue right away. I know sending out an email, even if it's not like an incentive email, it's just like educational, um, just kind of being at top of mind for our consumers at, at that moment can all of a sudden, you know, result in a lot of, in a lot of um, revenue just from that one campaign. So it's, um, I will say again, like, you know, I think 2020 has definitely 
shifted things or kind of pushed things in the digital marketing realm, um, you know, to their extremes and to their limits very quickly. And I think that we're seeing that a lot, um, just our email campaigns, things that just aren't performing at the same rate that they have been because of people are getting fatigued. So what does everybody else do? Move to SMS. But what happens with SMS? They just say like the whatever kind of, you know, uh, FCC, whoever is in charge of that, pretty much just said that cannabis companies, which include CBD companies, are not allowed to market via SMS messaging. So it's, it's just like one, the hits keep coming, you know what I mean? As soon as there's like, okay, like this is how we're going to get our audience reengaged. This is how we're going to, you know, bypass the cluttered uh, inboxes that everybody has right now. And it's just like, nope, not for CBD companies. So it's definitely, you know, you got to stay creative and you have to, um, you know, kind of roll with the punches. Uh, and that's really, you know, finding way, different ways to engage the audience. Um, you know, what I really Podcasts. love about the, the ebook example that you mentioned is offering value. You need to offer value to the client at, at some point, you know what I mean? And that's um, at every point rather through, um, through the funnel, right? At every kind of touch point you need to be offering them some kind of value um, because it's just way too easy for them to jump ship to somebody else these days. So we, um, we have this business partner of ours who is a uh, wildlife photographer. And um, you know, we, like I, I'm like, we're seeing the same thing with our email. So we built this business uh, from zero to $2 million in one year, this wildlife photography magazine. Right. And we should, we're seeing the same thing you're seeing, like email fatigue. They're just not working the way they did. Like we used to send an email out and make, you know, and I know this doesn't sound like a lot, but we send an email out every day. Like we would make $5,000 or $6,000, right? So like 5,000 times seven, I mean, it adds up, right? And then yeah. times 30, right? And then our Facebook ads are, are getting us a 2X return. So we're spending $90,000 a month and we're getting back 180,000. So we're definitely seeing things change. We're definitely seeing things get more difficult. And what I've done and what I've been doing is focusing my attention more on copywriting, learning how to, to, you know, sell with words. Right. Yep. And one thing, like, as you're talking about this, cause I am, I am like your customer, like mm -hmm. I need CBD. I need something to relieve the pain in my hip. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't sell this stuff so I can make all the claims in the world that I want. doesn't matter, but, <laughs> but you know, I don't want to take Advil every single day. Right. Mm -hmm. I don't want to do that. I want to take something that like, I know is not, is like, is like, okay for my body and that, that kind of stuff. Right. But the one thing that like, I, that keeps playing in my head when, as you're talking about your marketing is exactly what is taught in copywriting books. And that is like, to be honest with you, Brittany, like, I don't give a shit about anything but getting rid of my pain. The mm -hmm. rest of it is meaningless to me. I don't care the name of your company. I don't care the colors you use. I don't care how big, you know, like I don't care about anything other than, is it going to help me get rid of this pain? Right. So it's interesting because you guys really can't make claims like that. You can't say, well, it'll get rid of pain, but you could do like joint support or hip support or that, right. that kind of stuff. Right. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I feel like, you know, like when I'm searching for CBD stuff online, I'm just talking to you as, as a customer, potential customer, right? right? Really all I care about is, will it work? Mm -hmm. Will it help me? And from that standpoint, like you said, when we got on at first, you're like, not all CBD is created equal. And not that I knew that, but I assumed that some products may work better than others because the CBD is better or the content mm -hmm. of the CBD, how much is it? And they're like those kind of things. So I think like, if you guys like, and I'm not trying to give you like marketing advice, but I'm just telling you from like, my standpoint, I'm taking notes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just telling you like, from my standpoint is like all the other bullshit. I don't care about, like, I really don't care about you. And I don't mean you specifically, but about yeah, yeah. your company. I don't really care about like, like I care about what it's going to do for me. That's it. Yeah. And right. And um, so I think that you just hit the nail on the head of like, what's the difference between marketing to like Gen Z, younger millennial customers, and then like marketing to somebody at, uh, what, what age group do you fall into? El elder millennial or what? Like 24. Elder, yeah. elder, <laughs> elder definitely. I'm, elder. I'm 44. <laughs> right. So, so, you know, then it, you're, it's like the approach, um, has to be so different, but it's like our, our target market, I got, you know, it's very broad and as yeah we do have some like much older i'm talking like 70s 80s right 
people who are love our, our products. And we've recently just sent out a pretty like robust customer survey um, to really get a whole lot of feedback from our customers. And it's like really funny, like our, our you know main demographic of like females 25 to 40 is like kind of provides one set of answers. And then there's a lot of people like you, uh, you know, that are just like, I don't care about all this vibes bullshit. I just give me the product, you know what I mean? But the other ones that are like, I support you because you're a small business run by a woman and you practice sustainable farming. So it's a, you're like brands in general, like we're walking a very weird line right now of like, you know, like how, how to really effectively communicate to like such um, kind of different ends of the spectrum when like your product can work for both of them, but it's like how you have to message it is so different. And I think that that's, a uh, really great thing that, you know, is allowed, like, um, you know, kind of uh, provided through digital marketing is like segmentation and, you know, the ability to target different audiences with different messaging um, becomes crucial in those moments because there are going to be people that are more invested in your story. And then there are going to be an equal amount of people who do not give a shit about your story and just want to know about the product, right? So like understanding that split becomes like super, super important. And like, that's, I think one of the huge benefits of, you know, a lot of digital marketing right now is that you can, you can segment according to these things, right? You can segment according to people's interests, age group, gender, um, you know, all these different things that allow you to uh, tailor your message. And I think that if you're not tailoring your message more um, kind of just to these different parts of your, um, of your demographic, you're missing out on a really big opportunity to um, really leverage that audience to um, its full potential. I'm going to challenge something that you said, you, you know, let, let me first say that, like, you've clearly done the work. I, I get that. Um, mm -hmm. And <laughs> like, just like, just right off the bat. But I want to challenge one thing because I disagree with okay. what you Hold just on, said. Audio cut out. Oh, this is my thing. Um, can you can hear me. Maybe it's me. No. Can you, hear, can you hear us? I think it's me. Again. Can, you, can you hear me now? Yep. Perfect. Okay. <laughs> so I just want to, I just want to challenge one thing because um, on the face of it, you're right. But I don't think any of those people on the side of, I love that you're sustainable. doesn't have a problem they're trying to solve. It's just oh, how you, absolutely. how you talk to them right. yes. is different. Right. So at the end of the day, that person who really likes your company would not be sending you money and saying, Hey, don't send me a product. Oh, I don't really care. Yeah. Like, <laughs> Absolutely. So Absolutely. I think at the core, you know, what well, I'm saying it a little bit of like a little brash, but at the mm. core of it is like, they do really want their problem solved, but they want it solved by a company that does X, Y, and Z. Right. So exactly. although like the face of the marketing or the message may change, a, like may change for those people at the end of the day, what they really want is their pain because the people who want the problem solved are the ones that are going to take their money out and give it to you and, you know, and spend money. Right. So, and that's like the, the purpose, like, yes, you want to change the world, but you know, like if you, if it was only about changing the world, you do it for free. Like, hey, <laughs> obviously there's economics involved. Right? Yes. And that's, as I always say that like, you know, it's, you know, the, um, of the branding like what's on the outside is what gets people's like you know especially when you're talking like in-store retail and stuff like that it's like that branding like that initial impression is what gets people in the door what like might drive that initial sale but it's what's inside that is going to keep people coming back and that's something i'm you know really proud of our retention rate um given like the high fragmentation of the industry um you know over the past couple of years we've maintained around a 35 percent um you know uh retention rate uh, month over month for our customers. And that's, yeah, really speaks to the quality of what's inside. And yeah, because I agree with you. It's like, you know, but it's when it comes to differentiating from all the other CBE companies out there, right? So let's say, hey, I tried this topical and it works and I tried this topical and it works, but this topical uh, also, you know, donates to this cause that I really care about, right? Then that becomes the differentiating factor. 100% agree with you. The number one reason if they're going to come back or not, if they're going to buy it or not, is like, does it actually work? Right. Like, it, I'm not going to give you my money if it doesn't. 100% agree with you. But when it comes to 
you know, now this level of competition, like we were saying before, it's getting harder and harder to stand out among this, the, the kind of crowd of competition, um, especially as these larger brands enter the market, right? These kind of CPG brands that are just adding some CBD into their lines now, whatever it may be, that really becomes the um, positioning play for, you know, smaller brands, more conscious brands to um, really kind of um, stake claim in that those value propositions of um, social and environmental responsibility is, you know, especially compared to these kind of corporate giants that come in, you're going to, you know, if being a conscious consumer is important, important to you, then, you know, if you have the choice between product A and product B, they both work the same, like you're going to um, want to kind of shop with your values a little bit more. So we broke our rule about our half hour because I'm so interested in this and <laughs> talking to you about it. So um, I have like, how, first of all, like, if you don't mind sharing, like how big is your email list? Like, uh, about 15,000, 15,000. And are you guys, you don't have to give me exact numbers, but are you guys seven figure, eight figure? Are you guys not quite at seven figures yet? Like, where do you guys stand right now? As a uh, seven figures, seven figures. Yeah. So like one thing is like, for me is like, I love like the stuff you're doing with like all the other stuff you're talking about it, but, and I don't know, like, I haven't looked at all your messaging, but like, for me, it's like, I want it to work fast and I want it to work long. Mm -hmm. And for me, what would catch me if I was buying your stuff is like what makes it work fast and what makes it work more effectively is the quality of the CBD or the quality and uh, the amount of CBD. Mm -hmm. So those two things for me connect like, oh, OK, the, because guy, I know like I, I watch some of your videos and like you say that a lot is like not all CBD is created equal. Not, basically what you're saying is like better CBD works better. I mean, that's really what you're yeah. saying. Right. Mm -hmm. So like, for me, I think that would connect it. It's like, Oh shit. Like, okay. The quality is better. There's, there's, there's more of it in the product. So it's, it may work faster and way more may work longer. I think those for me are like, that's what I want to know. Um, yeah. Anyway. So this is very it's helpful. A, it's a better, it's a better, <laughs> I like your, I like your simple messaging too, on your own page, a better way to feel better. I like it. Yeah. <laughs> consciously, consciously crafted botanicals to help calm your mind, comfort your body and nurture your nature. I like that. Thank you. <laughs> um, so why don't you, uh, before we go, why don't you tell everybody where they can find tonic, social media, your website, all those wonderful things. Hey, you can find us at tonicvibes.com. Uh, we ship to all 50 states. And you can also find us on Instagram and Twitter, both at uh, tonic underscore CBD and Facebook tonic.cbd. But definitely Instagram is where we're the most active, where we love to uh, share the most updates. And you can also find our farm and our lab linked to our Instagram page as well. So you can have the full picture of exactly uh, what goes into making products that are work faster, work better, and work longer. And then what about your cell phone so I could text you every five minutes about stuff? <laughs> and you want to give that out too? I'll put that in the chat box. For right. you. <laughs> actually, you actually have something I haven't seen on, because uh, I've done my research. I have bought CBD in the past. I bought them from these like smoke places Shops. or whatever, the vape shops or whatever. Yeah. You actually have rolled, hand rolled, uh, uh, I don't know, you, what do you yeah. call it? A blunt? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a, a joint. Yeah. We have uh, our pre rolls are actually, yeah, very, very popular products. Uh, the pre rolls with our uh, certified organic hemp flower, high CBD. So, you know, especially if you're somebody who likes the, um, like the cessation of smoking and everything, um, that's really, it's like you feel like you're smoking a joint, but you just get like that immediate, like body high kind of feeling where you just like feel that lightness, a little like light euphoria but completely like clear headed, able to still, you know, get shit done through your day. So definitely it's a, it's cool. I'm, I'm definitely, definitely going to be a customer. I also like, to Oh eat yeah. I'm about to buy it now. So I, like, it I like to eat dark chocolate. <laughs> I'd like to eat dark chocolate too, just cause I feel like I, if I say I eat dark chocolate, like I could say it's healthy, but now I can yeah, say exactly. it's extra healthy. Because it's <laughs> extra CBD. healthy with the CBD. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> Let me tell you something. If yeah. this, if this CBD like even works a little bit on my hip, I promise you, I will be a, a one of those, monthly subscriber things dogs awesome. dog treats is awesome anyway <laughs> thank you so <laughs> thank you so much and Brittany. i really appreciate it thank you so much for joining us thank you another great interview jason again i feel like we could have went on for a lot longer yeah i mean we told her a half hour and we went like at least 45 minutes right <laughs> and then we got off and we just uh we asked her advice on what we should buy so <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh you could tell like she had to let go she was she, like you looked at she was yeah. like ready to go but yeah. uh 
really cool interview, man. I mean, really knowledgeable. I love, I really enjoy talking with her. Yeah, very cool. Well, hope you guys enjoyed it. As always, you can check us out at ecommerceuncensored.com. And we'll talk to you guys real soon. Later. Attention e-commerce founders, entrepreneurs, side hustlers, marketers, and growth hackers. If you're working round the clock to build your dream e-commerce business, you need an e-commerce marketing platform that works just as hard as you do. That means you need Klaviyo. With Klaviyo, you'll delight customers and drive revenue at the same time. With personalized emails and SMS marketing campaigns that you can design and send in minutes. For more, visit klaviyo.com uncensored. That's K-L-A-V-I-Y-O dot com uncensored.